Thank you, church. How are we doing today? Great. I personally love the voices of all of the worship team. This morning was amazing. You know what I love more? When every one of us sing hallelujah or shout out hallelujah, that rawness that brings without any instruments, without anything that um, you know, accompanies song is what I love more. I love all the uh, worship songs. It's amazing. But why don't you take a minute to shout out to the Lord and say hallelujah. 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 Glory to you, Jesus, hallelujah. for everything that you do now, miss. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, that was amazing. All right, guys, uh, just before I uh, go take a deep dive into the scriptures, just I wanted to tell a story about a, a nightclub that is about to open in a small town on a main street. And what happened, there was one little church uh, in that town, and they started praying. And up, upon hearing this news, they announced an all-night prayer meeting, and all the members of the, of the church started praying that God would do something about this nightclub. They all prayed that, you know, God would burn down this club and they wouldn't see this club anymore. And they were so concerned about this little, little village. And what happened that night, everyone slept and the lightning hit the nightclub and, uh, and it burned it to the ground, right? And then the nightclub owner sued the church, sued the church saying that, you know what, because of your prayers, my nightclub is not anymore. But, the night, but our church denied all the responsibilities. So they all went to the judge. And they said, the judge heard both the cases. And the judge said, I don't know where the problem lies, but one thing is certain, that the nightclub owner believes in prayer more than the church do. <laughs> uh, so today my, uh, my topic is, what if we pray together? What if we all come together and pray together? And... Uh, Especially in the midst of trials, especially in the midst of uh, uh, problems that we face, what if we pray together? So uh, join with me as I pray. Uh, please close your eyes and bow down your heads. Lord Jesus, we come before you with a grateful heart. We pray that you minister to our hearts in a special way, God. I pray as the word is preached that you touch the hearts of our, uh, each member that came to him today. I pray that every word that come alive and speak into the people's hearts, Father. I pray that you hide me under your cross and let you be preached. In Jesus' mighty name we ask and pray. Amen, amen. If you have your Bibles, why don't you turn with me to Acts chapter 12. We're going to read some scriptures from there, from verse 1 till 10. It says, verse 1, It was about the time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this met the approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to the guards by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out of the public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to the God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and centuries, centuries stood uh, guard at the entrance. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared, and the light shone in the cell. He stuck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals, and Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around, your, uh, around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and the second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Here in Acts chapter 12, we see the early church uh, in the peak of the persecution. It happened around 40 AD. That means after 40 years after the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, but during this time, Stephen has been martyred. Stephen uh, has been killed for his belief. And all the church has been scattered around. All the believers were scattered, hiding themselves. And the peak of persecution is up there. Um, but we see as well the church here 
also started growing. You know, church here, it says that it is the greatest period of the church growth. We see time and time again that the, the age of persecution is the best age for the church growth. We see it in all around the world as well. We see a lot of persecution going on, but we see as well that the church is growing rapidly as well. Amen? And that's uh, an encouragement for all of us as well, that as we face problems, that's a uh, great promise for all of us, that as we face problems, there's opportunities for us to grow as well, in Jesus' name. Here we see uh, churches scattered around, and there in chapter 11, we see the great, there's a great famine, um, and the church in Jerusalem and was going through famine, but the church in Antioch grew rapidly, and they wanted to support this church in Judea, even though there was some... Uh, famine going on, they wanted to send some funds and resources to this church. But Herod started persecuting the church. We see here that Herod captured James. James is one of the three, basically. He's uh, uh, the top three, if I may call. He's one of the Pet Peter, James, and John, right? He is the brother of uh, the two who are called the brothers of thunder. You know that story where his, his mother went to Jesus and asked, Jesus, can my two sons sit on either side of you? So he was one of the three. He's the, the three saw the transfiguration of Jesus Christ as well. So he was killed just before then. He was the first apostle who got killed. And church is going through a lot of persecution at that time. But here we see the church of Antioch grew mightily. And they were called the first Christians. We see that in parallel as well. Such an amazing thing that most of the time we feel that whenever we face challenges and we pray together and we expect God to bring a uh, you know, bouquet or something nice, but God will give us that strength. He says that he will be with us uh, through the journey. Amen. So let's look into the scriptures. Verse 1, it says, It was about time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church intending to persecute them. Here we see Herod. Herod is not the same guy, uh, same king who was um, at, uh, who killed all the boys when Jesus was born. He was not the Herod who was in the trial of Jesus, but he was the Herod uh, who was the grandson of the first uh, king who killed all the boys. So all the three Herods were causing all this persecution, and here we see this generational uh, persecution coming through. And here we see Herod who tried to, uh, intending to persecute the church. Here it's like a uh, boxing match between Herod's intention versus church's prayer, isn't it? We see church earnestly praying for Peter, but Herod is intending to persecute the church furthermore. So we had to know in Genesis, I remember this verse from Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, where um, Joseph was saying to his uh, brothers, as far as you're concerned, you intended evil for me, but God turned it around for good. You know that verse, right? So every intention that evil may uh, scheme against us, but God says that I will turn it around for good for you. So that's a great blessing and a promise in for us, my dear brothers and sisters, to know that God has great plans for you. And even however people may scheme against bad things against us, but God is saying that I can turn that around. Herod is intending to persecute the church, but the church is earnestly praying. And we're going to see great things happening in this chapter Furthermore, verse 2, it says that he had James, the brother of John, put to death with sword. When he saw that pleased the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. After arresting him, he put him in the prison, handing him over to the guards uh, by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out of the public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in the prison but church was earnestly praying. My dear friends, you may ask, what is an earnest prayer? Prayer is something, earnest prayer is something we do, not, we do not stop for the situation that we face. Earnest prayer is something which has faith in it. Earnest prayer is something we pray for something that may not happen, but we still continue to pray and say, Lord, it's not my will, but let your will be done. It's, a, it's something like a prayer that Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane. You remember that prayer? That is an earnest prayer. Praying, asking God to intervene, but however, let his will be done. That's what church is doing here, earnestly praying. We never stop. We never stop praying. Bible says that do not cease to pray. Amen? That's what God's will for us, that we do not cease to pray. That will not stop. 
Even though we, do, we cannot see things happening, even though we, not, we do not feel something is happening, but we do not stop praying. I mean, that is earnest prayer. And that's what the church in Antioch started doing for Peter. Then that's what our calling is to be uh, in today's age to, to continue to pray respective of what's going on around. So I don't know how many of, pray, of you prayed for patience or pay, uh, prayed for some uh, breakthroughs. And most of the time we see oppositions because God doesn't uh, come and just uh, take it away from us or bring something nice and merry into our lives, but God gives us strength to overcome that particular thing that you prayed for. There's a little poem that I would like to read, which is very dear to my heart, right from my childhood. It says, I asked for strength, and God gave me difficulties to face so that it will make me strong. I asked for wisdom, and God gave me problems to solve. I asked for prosperity, and God gave me brawn and brain to work. I asked for courage, and God gave me dangers to overcome. And I asked for patience, and God placed me in a situation where I was forced to wait. How many of you agree with that? And I asked for love, and God gave me who? God gave me troubled people so that I, I can express love. I asked for favor, and God gave me opportunities. I received nothing I wanted, but I received everything that I needed. And my prayer has been answered. Amen. And that's the uh, poem that, that is stuck on my wall when I'm growing up. And every single time we pray for something, remember that God gives an opportunity. When you pray for something, God knocks the door and gives us an opportunity to overcome that situation. God, but God will surely answer our prayers. We see time and time and again that we pray for something and we forget about it. But over the due time, God will answer that same prayer that we bestowed up upon. And I, I and Priya, we married for almost... Uh, Six, six years now, six and a half years now. And, uh, and we've been praying that God, uh, you know, answer our prayers and give us a child. And it's been a few years, and every one of us started praying, and my parents getting really stressed out and uh, what's happening and all of that. And first few years, we thought, oh, just leave us alone. We wanted to spend some time with each other. Uh, but then when we got serious, we started praying unto the Lord. And uh, in God's own time, God will open the doors, right? And it's such a miracle. It's a huge testimony. One day I will share the whole testimony. Uh, it may not be the right time, but I just wanted to share this news with you that prayers open doors. Amen. Prayers will open doors. Whatever situation you're going through, you might, you might even forget the prayer that you, uh, you, share, you share to the Lord, but God will never forget. And I would like to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, that whatever you're praying, whatever is in your heart, that deep down desire in your heart that you put onto the Lord. Don't give up praying because God will make a way for you. Amen? Because that is God's will for us. One day, uh, one of the young leaders came to me. Uh, we used to have connect groups, and one of the leaders came to me and, uh, and asked me, Joel, I just wanted, I don't know what, what's God's will for me. I don't know what it is, but if I know, I would do that. And I told him, brother, I don't know what God's will for you, but one thing is for sure that I know, that for all of us, God's will is one thing, which, is, which you find in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17, it shows the God's will for each one of us as his children. It says, pray without ceasing and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. No matter you just received Jesus Christ just now, or maybe got baptized a few weeks ago, or maybe you're a Christian for, few, for 40 years, I don't know, but God's will for all of us is to not stop praying, but also give thanks in every situation, and that is God's will for us. You may think that, you know, what is the purpose of my life? What am I going to do? But one thing is for sure that God wants all of us to give praise to him in every situation that we are in. And that, that, that is God's will for all of us. Amen? Amen. And here we see church has no idea what's happening to Peter. You see, you see here that the famine hit, um, hit, uh, hit the land in just ch one chapter before. And James has been killed. And Peter is, is, is their preacher. And he's been captured, and he's kept in the prison, and they don't know what's happening to Peter there, but they started praying. They started continuing to pray earnestly and without knowing what's happening. And sometimes we had to pray in the unknown. 
We have to pray in the unknown. What's going to happen, we don't know, but we still have to pray in the unknown. And the church here started praying. We, we may have doubts. We may not see the results of our prayers for some time. We may have doubts. We may say, like, you know, we, I've been praying for this quite for some time now. I'm not here seeing any answers. I'm not seeing any breakthroughs. But we need to pray in the unknown. Here, church don't know what's happening to Peter, but they started praying. My dear brothers and sisters, we may not see the results of our prayers right away, but our God is a God who never really neglects our prayers. And I just wanted, came to uh, encourage all of you guys that, you know, we never neglect prayers. I don't know how many of you are attending the Tuesday prayer meetings here, but there's power in praying together. Amen. There's power in praying in alone, in your solitude, in, when, in your closet, but there's power, much more power in praying together in corporate prayer. When we come together in one accord, you know what happens then? The prayers, when you do it in alone, is about yourself, your family, and your desires. But when we come together as a, as a corporate body, we pray for something bigger than yourself. We pray for something mightier than yourself. And that's the prayer God wants uh, to hear from you guys. And here, the church don't know what's happening, and they are praying in the unknown, and that is faith. Peter is just a few hours away from the trial. And he don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. He's just in the prison, and tomorrow he may be executed. And Peter is in that verge of his death. But let's see what Peter is doing. Verse 6. Here we see, the night before Herod was bring him to trial, Peter was... Can someone read that? Can, Peter was sleeping. The night before Herod was bringing him to trial, Peter was sleeping. He was not anxious. He was not pacing. He was not uh, uh, sleepless. He was not thinking about, oh, what, what's going to happen to my church that I started? He's not thinking all of that. He's just sleeping. He's resting. He knows that God has got him. Do we have to sleep in between something? I don't know about you, that, but I had to sleep in so many things. Like, you know, I don't know, uh, tomorrow the doctor results are going to come up. I don't know what's going to happen. Tomorrow the job result is going to come. I don't know what's happening, but tonight we need to sleep. It not be as serious as, like, you know, Peter uh, facing the death trial tomorrow, but we have our own things. We had to probably sleep in the night. Here Peter is sleeping. He's not anxious. He's not Sleepless, some of us may say, ah, oh, brother, I can't sleep that night because so much of anxiety hit me. I don't know what's happening, so much of uncertainty. But my brothers and sisters, as believers, as the children of God, we know that God can do all things in Jesus' name. And we have that confidence in him that we can rest. Here, Peter is sleeping. How can you sleep? How can you sleep when James got just killed? James was one of the three and he got killed. Probably church might have prayed for James as well. Right? But he got killed by the sword. And knowing that, how can Peter sleep? But here we see Peter sleeping. If you know Peter, Peter is the one who stopped Jesus not to go onto the cross, right? And he was the one who denied Jesus three times, right? And how can the same Peter be so confident and sleeping in this prison cell. What did he know that made him to sleep in the middle of the night? I think it's not something he knows that he made him to sleep in the night, but it's, not, it's what he saw. Remember that, uh, that episode where Jesus was on the boat, he, they were crossing uh, to the other side in Luke chapter 8, and there was a huge storm, and everyone was panicking, and all the disciples were panicking, and they went to the Lord and was... Jesus was doing, Jesus was sleeping there as well. And maybe that's what he saw and he remembered that, you know, Jesus was sleeping in the storm, maybe I should sleep as well. And he was sleeping here as well. That's what changed, I believe, in Peter. Please turn with me to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. This, uh, even the Sunday school kids probably memorized this by heart, but Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 is uh, dear to my heart. It says, do not be anxious of Anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard 
the next part is very important. Guard your heart and minds in Christ Jesus. Do not be anxious of anything the word of the Lord says. But in every situation, offer your thanksgiving to the Lord. And the peace that transcends all understanding, you may have certain understanding about your situation, we may not know. You know the in end of that situation that you are in, but God is saying the peace that transcends all understanding that you are having will guard your heart and also your mind. Your heart may say, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, and here we are to praise God, but your mind, after you go out, you might be thinking, oh, what can I do? Who can I call right now to get, out, get me out of this situation? What bank balance do I have to face this problem? But God says here, do not be anxious. But if you bring every situation in prayer and petitions, then the peace that transcends all understanding will not only guard your heart, but also your mind. Prayer should be earnest, my dear brothers. Prayer should be fervent. It, it should not stop. Unceasing prayer, unwavering prayer is what God expects from us. And then furthermore, we see Peter is doing what he's sleeping, but he's sleeping also in between two soldiers, we see. We see here Peter is sleeping in between soldiers. Then I don't know, like, you know, if... Uh, um, anyone had this opportunity to just sleep somewhere and not, uh, not in your bedroom, but someone is like, you know, guarding you or standing in between you, you could never sleep. It destroys your sleep, right? Priya had some problems sleeping in unknown places. If we go somewhere, she had to take a day to sleep. But here, Peter is so calm and he's having this uh, confidence in the Lord that whatever happens, it's in God's will. And that made him to sleep in between. And won't encourage you as well. I don't know what you're expecting tomorrow, what you're expecting next week. You don't know what may be happening, but you may be anxious, but God is telling you, do not be anxious. Just rest. I got you. Just rest. Sleep in between the two soldiers. Sleep in between the circumstance, what's going to happen tomorrow. Sleep during the night. And God has got you. Don't be anxious. As your children, as, the, as we are the children of the great God who created the whole universe and everything in it, he's the king of kings and lord of lords, and we got to worry nothing. And everything is possible through him. And Peter is sleeping in between two soldiers here. Let's continue our study. Verse 7, it says, Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared, and light shone in the cell. He stuck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals, and Peter did so. Peter didn't say, oh, wait a second, who are you? Wait a second, show me your ID. He didn't say any of these things. He implicitly obeyed the angel. He just saw an angel, and he stuck him and said, get up, Peter, let's, let's, let's get going. He didn't ask where, he didn't ask who are you and all of that stuff. But he showed implicit obedience. My dear brothers and sisters, obedience is the key for your breakthroughs. Obedience is, always comes before freedom. We just sang this, song, sang this song right now that, you know, when the sun sets free, it's free indeed, right? And that is a song we need to sing as well. When he sets us free, we are free indeed. And that comes with that obedient heart, that submission heart. Here, Peter got up immediately. And he saw victory. As um, Pastor Manuel was reading just now about uh, our, uh, little David, right? And I just remember that, you know, uh, when he had to face Goliath, uh, I don't think Goliath would have probably uh, opened, uh, knocked the door of David and said, come fight with him. He had to obey to his father Jesse. He showed obedience to father Jesse that father said, oh, go take these things to your brothers. And upon obedience, he had this opportunity to face Goliath, I believe. When you take that little step of obedience, God is going to open up an amazing opportunity where you could be that heroes of faith for God. And we all love this story where David faced Goliath, right? But look at the chapters before how he, he was obedient to his father. And how much more God expects us to be obedient to our eternal father. 
the little things, Peter was asked to get up and walk. My dear brothers, it's a check on of all of us that are we being obedient, being submissive to God's word? Verse 7, it says the, um, that he, he got up and he, he obeyed um, the angel. And I also want to uh, read uh, Charles Wesley. I don't know who all know Charles Wesley here. Yeah, and I, I miss singing all those old hymns. Uh, it's all contemporary songs now in the worship, but I love those old hymns. And Charles Wesley wrote amazing songs. And one of the songs, I believe, is inspired from this chapter here. And it's about Peter. Uh, Barney, can you put up that slide where Amazing Grace? Yeah, that's the one. It says, Amazing Grace, how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? Long my imprisoned spirit lay, fast bond in sin and nature's night. Thine eye diffused a quickening ray. I woke the dungeon flamed with light. My chains fell off. My heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. Isn't it just the story of Peter here? You see here that amazing grace, how can it be that my God should die for me? Long my prisoned, imprisoned spirit lay, fast bound in sin and nature's night. Thine eye diffused a quickening ray. I woke, the dungeon flamed with light. My chains fell off. My heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. That's all of our stories. When we are still sinners, Jesus loved us. And he picked us from miry clay. And all our chains were broken. All our bondages were broken. And we were free indeed. And what we had to do, I followed thee. He says that I rose, went forth, and followed thee. And that's what we're doing as followers of Jesus Christ here. We're going to the ends of the world, taking the gospel. We're reaching to the ends of the world, to the reaching gospel. And even maybe you're placed in a place, situation in your workplace where you got to share your scriptures, share your gospel, the good news. I went this morning to Riverstone, you just set, just set it up, and Linda was there, and she was asking, my son, where are you going? And I said that to Parramatta, and she asked me, are you taking the good news? I said, yes. And it is indeed a good news to come here and share God, what God has done in our life. And we follow Jesus Christ. That's what Peter did here. He just woke up and followed the angel. Verse 8, it says, the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals. He don't know where it's going, but he said, the angel told him, put on your sandals. Faith is getting dressed without knowing where you're going. Getting dressed where you're going. We don't know what, what, what lies ahead, but we are ready, right? We are allow GPS because it don't tell all the directions for maybe 10, 20 steps ahead. It just tells you where to go when, right? We take this step, we reach there, and then it says take left, and we take it. We all love it. But when it comes to God, we want to know the whole plan. We just want to know the whole history. What is God's will for me for the rest of my life? But God is telling you that take that one implicit step of faith. And here, Peter was asked to put on the clothes and sandals. No details. He didn't give any details. Angel just said, put on your clothes. And he did so. Faith is a substance of the things that hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We hope for things and faith is a substance of the things that we hope for. Amen. And Peter did, did so. Wrap, wrap your clock, clock around you and follow me. And he followed the angel. And when he obeyed, so many breakthroughs will happen. My dear brothers, we don't have to be Peters to be in the prison. Peter is in the prison, and he may die tomorrow. But we have our own prisons, right? We have our own prisons. We don't have to be in the prison to be persecuted. There are some places in the, in the world where people are persecuted because of the faith. But here in Australia, we have this freedom. But we do have our own prisons. We have our own addictions. We have our own breakthroughs that we need to happen. We are, bond, we are in the bondages. God is telling, God will redeem you from that little prison that you are in. 
and God will give you breakthrough when you show implicit obedience to him. Verse 10, let's move on. It says, they passed the first and the second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself and they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Here we see that the, both of them went through the gates. It says that they passed the first and second guards and the iron gates leading to the city. And the, the gates were opened by itself and they went through it. The angel didn't carry him. And we have this understanding that, you know, God will just uh, carry us from the situations and all of that. But here we see Peter and angel going through it. We may have to go through some situations in our life. But God is saying that he will be with you just like the angel was with Peter. Whatever situation that we are facing, my dear brothers and sisters, know that our dear Lord is with us in that. And we need to go through these gates. We need to go through these guards. And the, it says that the, the gate opened by itself. I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what you're going through, what you went through all this year. But God is reminding you that he will not leave you nor forsake you. Amen. That is a great promise for all of us to this morning, that God is a God who is the creator of the universe. And he is saying that he will not leave us nor forsake us in whatever we're going through. In verse 11, it says that then Peter came to himself and said, Not I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent this angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping for would happen. He's saying that now I know this is from the Lord. Herod came to get me. Herod intended to kill me. Herod wanted to persecute me, but no, God has never let him touch me. Isn't it our testimony as well, my dear brothers? People may intend to harm us. Evil may intend to to disarm us, but God is saying that I will never let them touch you. And here Peter is saying, indeed, without a doubt, that the Lord sent this angel and rescued me. Now I know without a doubt, he's saying. Do you know this yourself? Many a times God rescues us from so many situations that we ourselves fell into. We don't even know that God rescued us. We just take it for granted. Hey, so many things, even today when, if you're alive, I feel that is purely God's grace. Even the, the breath in our nostrils is because of his grace. And we just take it for granted, hey. Here Peter is saying, now I know without a doubt that it is God. Verse 12, it says that when this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. <laughs> Here we see still the church is still praying. They are still on their knees praying for Peter. Here we see that, you know, they, they're still knocking, asking the Lord to open this door. Peter is already, is already rescued. He's, he went there to see what they're doing, and they started praying. Man, I don't know about you, but if I pray for James, and James has been killed, I don't know if I'll have faith to pray for Peter. But here, church prayed for James, and they lost him, but still they are on their knees still asking God. That is earnest prayer. That is faith. That prayer requires faith. Don't give up. Don't give up. If you pray for something and that didn't happen, God has a great plan and purpose for your life for this thing that you're praying for. Don't give up. Devil may say in your ear, hey, you prayed for that earnestly. You fasted. That didn't happen. What is the point of praying now? But here we see church earnestly praying for Peter. Even though they lost James. If you didn't get anything from this message, if you get this, that will be happy. And God is just reminding you to tell that, you know, whatever you're praying for you, in your heart, I'm hearing that. Let's move on. Verse 13, Peter knocked at the outer entrance and the servant named Rhoda came and answered the door. When she recognized Peter was, she was so overjoyed, she ran back without opening and with excitement. Peter is at the door, she said, and you're out of your mind, they said. They said, you're out of mind. They're praying for something. You remember that story that I tell about the nightclub? They were praying for something, and they said, you're out of your mind, Rhoda. What are you talking about? And she was so excited. She said, that, come on, guys. Peter is at the door. Come on, let's open the door. And 
They said, you're out of your mind. Yes, we may just have some things in our mind. Our thoughts are very low than God's thoughts. The Bible says that my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. The Bible says my ways are higher than your ways. Our mindset will be just unable to believe what can open doors for you. Here, church is praying, but they are unable to believe that Peter is at the door. Isn't it our situation sometimes that we may not even believe the prayer that we are offering unto the Lord? Are we just <coughs> offering our prayers just for the sake of praying? But God says that when you pray, believe that it's done. Here, church is praying for Peter, and Peter is at the door knocking. And they said, you're out of your mind. They told her, you're out of your mind. When she kept insisting that it is Peter, they said, it must be his angel. <laughs> they, said, they said it might be angel. It's easier for them to believe that Peter is dead and his angel came to the door than to believe that God has rescued Peter. It's incredible, guys. And I, I couldn't believe when I read this that they said it must be an angel. We tried to find excuses or other reasons what it could happen, but find it hard to believe it was God. Find it hard it was God. It is easier to believe that it was Peter's angel. Can you believe tonight, this morning that God can raise up the dry bones and make an army out of it? Amen? Can you believe that he will turn your morning into dancing? Can you believe? Can you believe that he will raise up that, um, you know, living, uh, rivers of living water in the desert? Can you believe he will make your barren life fruitful? Here, the church couldn't believe that Peter was the door. Here, the church, church couldn't believe that Peter is there and he, God answered their prayers. No. In verse 23, it says that the angel of the Lord did what? To Herod, it stuck him down. And he, he was, Herod was eaten by worms and he died, it says. Herod intended to kill Peter, but he himself was killed. That's a powerful God we serve. And he says that here, Peter was not dead, but Herod was dead. In this whole chapter, my dear brothers and sisters, that we saw the persecution of faith and the prayer of the faith, and also the result of faith. Whenever we go through some persecutions, whenever we go through the trials, remember that all we have to do is prayer and offer our thanksgiving unto the Lord. And, and the peace that sur surrounds all understanding will guard your heart. Uh, can I invite um, the worship team to come forward? Uh, I asked uh, the team to sing this song for me, uh, Break Every Chain. Whatever chains that is holding you up, God is telling you this morning that I can redeem you. All you got to do is have that faith in me and I will restore you. Heaven is full of answers, for no one has ever asked to bother, Billy Graham said. All good is born in prayer and all good springs out of it, Charles Spurgeon said. Doubtful prayer is no prayer at all, John Calvin said. There's so many scriptures and, and, and uh, quotes that I can give you this morning. But my dear brothers and sisters, that all I'm asking you today, all God is asking you today is your faith in your prayers. And believe in the prayer that you offer unto him. And he will answer your prayers this morning. Because our God is a God who is the creator of the whole universe. In Jesus' name, we have victory. Amen. Pastor Freddie just said, we have victory in Jesus' name. We have victory in Jesus' name. The name of Jesus, which is beyond every other name. He is the creator of the whole universe. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is omniscient God. He is omnipotent God. He is everlasting Father, the Bible says. And He's got you. He's got you this morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Why don't you close your eyes and and call out to him. Even if you have one single prayer that's been answered in your life. Why don't you remember that? And our God is a God who answers prayers. Our God is a God who is not deaf to hear your prayers. 
but he's saying that in my time that I'll answer your prayers I got you he says that even before you are even conceived I know you by name I got great plans for you the word says A God a God is our father it says he is Jehovah Jaira he says that Jehovah Rapha who is our savior who is our healer Bible says that Jehovah he is our Jehovah Shama he is our Jehovah Nissi he is our Jehovah Shalom and that's the God we serve this morning my dear brothers and sisters any chains that are holding you that can be broken in Jesus name in Jesus name there is victory there is power in the name of victory any chains that are holding you they'll be broken in Jesus mighty name any addictions that are holding you this morning they'll be broken in Jesus name any prisons that are you are in the prison that is holding you God says I'll redeem you from it my dear brothers and sisters if you need a prayer this morning why don't you come to the altar the prayer that you're praying from a long time here their pastoral team waiting for you they want to pray for you any single prayer that you're having in your heart there is power if you need prayers please come forward to the altar god says come to the altar and i will give you i will bless you any prayer in your heart my dear brothers to break every chain you've been praying for something god says that i know that little prayer no one knows about it to break every not even your spouse knows about it but i know that little prayer in your heart if you have that prayer come forward and pastor team is here to pray for you there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus to break there is every chain to break every chain break every chain break his power to break every chain 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 there is power in the name of Jesus there is power there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain 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 there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus there is power Every chain to break every chain to break every break every 
chain break every chain break every chain break every chain break every chain break every chain to break every chain 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 break every
Congregation, whilst we continue in ministry, praying for those who are still coming, we want to thank you for your patience. We want to praise the Lord for the ministry that we have seen here. We praise God that um, He has been in our midst. The powerful message we received from our brother Joel continue to trust in the Lord whatever it is you are going through is what we were being reminded that even the technology of automatic gates came from this passage gates opened for by themselves and became handy during COVID they just opened because we are praying so we pray we pray open the closed doors God is on your case. Do not give up. That's the message we got here. Be open to the Lord and use your gifts. We are seeing even Joel, we send him out there as a deacon. Then we appointed him as an elder there. And God is using him mightily, as you can see. Did you know even Pastor Graham used to be the praise and worship leader? So no one is limited. Use your gifts. We want this year to see a breakthrough in this area. Use your gifts. 
the Lord is on your case. Please receive the blessing of the Lord as we dismiss. Whilst the rest will be praying here, we'll be free to go to the cafe and have fellowship there. So I'll invite us to stand and receive this blessing, the reading from Numbers chapter 6, verse 24. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. In everything you do this week, may God bless you. May God be on your case. May God rescue you. May he deliver you. May he protect you and be available to you as you seek him. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Please come again next Sunday. The Lord is faithful. Praise God. Thank you, our Heavenly Father for seeing us through in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God.